Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar, Buying a Business, presented by ESS Biz Tools as part of our package, Tools to Create Opportunities. Opportunities for accountants, business advisors, bookkeepers, and chief financial officers supplying services to SMEs, but also, of course, to the owners and operators of small, medium enterprises. Hopefully, to give you a better understanding of the services that accountants can provide to you. Businesses are always being purchased, but for most of your clients, they may have purchased a business one, two, three, maybe sometimes four or five times, but that's about it. So you, whilst your client might be a very good business person, their experience to what's required to be able to sell a business could be rather limited. Most will need your assistance to get the best deal. Have they got experience in this type of business? Has your client worked in this business before? Do they understand the time commitment that's required? Do they understand the working hours to this particular business? Does it suit their lifestyle? Does it suit their family? Is it a seven day a week trading business? Some of them these days trade 24 hours a day like gymnasiums. Is that going to suit their family? And obviously if it's going to be trading for those number of hours, 168 hours in a, uh, in a week, the leader or the owner of the business is going to be able to train people, delegate authority, set up a management system. Will he be able to do that or will she be able to do that or they want to have their fingers on every decision that's being made, which is virtually impossible in that situation. It's a good idea for you to have a look at the business systems that are being inherited within this business. What are the key performance indicators? Are those figures readily available? And some of them might be daily, weekly, but even hourly and obviously monthly basis. Has a budget been prepared? Have you reviewed the budget? Have you made sure that everything's included? Are the salaries and wages at the right level? Have you got accountancy fees at the right level? Not just four or $5,000, which is basically the annual accounts and the tax return. This is your opportunity to be advancing the concept that you are able to provide a full business accounting service, a virtual CFO service. And my suggestion, if the client only wants a set of annual accounts and tax returns, you should be suggesting they go somewhere else if your firm is committed to supplying a broader range of diversified services under the banner of business advisory services. Has a cash flow forecast been prepared? Has everything been included? The loan repayments. And has it got appropriate level for the build up of stock if it's a retail or wholesale business? Various times of the year, stock has to be built up. Has there been discussions with the major suppliers to the business? Will they continue to make supplies available to your clients? All very important, especially if there's some very important products that this particular business currently sells that are integral to this business. If your client's buying the business, they want to make sure that the suppliers are going to continue to supply, but the vendor's got no control over that. It's no use your client just accepting the vendor said. You need to make sure your client's got confirmation and more so than verbally in writing from the supplier. Have you discussed with your client the desirability of preparing monthly financial accounts and then the follow on? of a monthly business review meeting so that the financials have been looked after in a business-like manner. So comparisons to budgets can be prepared and analyzed to determine where improvements could be made. So in this uh, presentation today, we're going to have a look at the business advisory services package on buying a business. 
So I'm just going to switch to our website now and bring that up for you to review. So on the website now, you have the buying a business package. This is just the executive summary, which is summarizing the papers. What's down on the left-hand side here are other packages, other product packages within ESS BizTools, but we're concentrating today on buying a business. So we're gonna download that content, which if you were a subscriber, you could do. And this is a list of the material in this package. The BAS refers to business advisory services, not the other BAS. We had this before the tax office come up with that concept. Thinking of buying a business, purchasing a business, consultancy checklist, buying shares in a company. We're gonna look at a few of these items to give you an overview of what's included in this type of product package. So we're gonna go back and go to the procedure control form which is the very important document that is part of the So on the procedure control form, this is the important document for the system because it sets out the various steps. We got 31 steps in this approach to buying a business. And we start off with what from an accountant's point of view is probably pretty important. That's quotation and proposal, articles to assist the purchaser that you've got. So you just work your way through it. There's a general paper on buying a business consultancy, which you could click onto and read gives you a detailed background on the suggested approach to take to deliver a business advisory service. So we're going to click onto that. And on your screen now, you should be able to see the paper, buying a business consultancy. So this is an overall summary of this approach, which before you start undertaking this sort of consultancy work, I'd suggest that you conduct staff training on the whole process, but start with this one to take your team through what is included in buying in, in offering a buying uh, a business consultancy service for your clients. The material is linked to other articles, BAS articles and papers. And we have what we call an education package, which will help your team have a better idea of the matters that may arise relative to buying a business the concept of due diligence reviews and looking at the situation if your client is buying shares in a company. I don't normally recommend buying shares, but obviously as, as companies get bigger, it becomes the more appropriate way that sales are being conducted. And that company may have certain intellectual property rights or license agreements which make it virtually impossible to take possession of the business in any other way. Also, your client might only be buying a 50% interest in the business. It could be some other shareholders staying in the business. And then we got due diligence lists for non-company due diligence checklists. So there's a range of material in the system I'm just going to go back to where we were and um, 
we can then continue with the material as we go back now to the form. to assist you on this process. Then we got purchasing a business checklist. So we're going to go into that. This is the form which will give you some guidance on items that you probably should be looking at when it comes to advising a client on purchasing a business. Copies of financial accounts. I've got their five years, p and and balance sheet. So you can get a good feel for what's been happening. What do you, what's your client need access to? You might be able to think of a couple of other items there, but I've put down all I can. Ascertain whether the vendor is operating similar businesses somewhere else. There's been all sorts of stories over the years of manipulations occurring when there's another similar business uh, in a, an adjoining suburb. Examine the stock in the business. Is it obviously old? Uh, what's the stock turnover? How does it compare to benchmarking comparisons to other similar businesses? What's the history of the business? It's a good idea for your client to know the history. They might want to publicize because in a year's time, the business might be 25 years old. Well, that's something you can use in your promotional campaign. Who are the major competitors? What do you, what's your client think of them? What's their likely future? What's their strengths and weaknesses? This the major suppliers. Is your client talk to those suppliers? Is they have they made arrangements to be able to trade with those suppliers? Are the terms of trade convenient, suitable, or are they wanting payments made on a cash basis or within seven days of receipt? Does the business currently? render its invoices promptly. What's the debtor's days outstanding? Because I've had situations where I've observed that some, some people have bought a business and not looked at this and debtor's days outstanding have been up around 100 days and a new owner goes in and suddenly tries to enforce 30 day trading terms and the customers didn't like it and they started leaving. Now that can be a disaster to a new owner. So to save that embarrassment and that problem, I'd be really checking those debtors' days outstanding. And if they're very long, make sure your client realizes that's what they may have to fund, 100 days. Plant and equipment, is it up to date? Is it licensed? Is it serviceable? Or is it all ready to be thrown out? What's on lease? What's on higher purchase? Is there a lease of premises that are very important to this particular business? Is it a milestone address? Therefore, you'd want to make sure there's been a discussion with the landlord to make sure they're going to agree to assign the lease to your client. Examine the terms of the lease. What's your client got to do either during the lease? In a lot of shopping centres, it's not unusual to have a requirement that every two or three years to Shop's got to be refurbished, can be very expensive. And what condition is the premises got to be left in at the end of the lease? Some leases indicate they've got to be returned to their original condition, can be very expensive. If you're buying, your client's buying the uh, premises, make sure they get the written down value, the original cost, all those details. So they've got the ability to continue on with the depreciation of the building. Check about the zoning. Don't assume just because someone's operating a business of a particular type 
in this location that they've got approval from the council. They might, might not. It might be a, a sweetheart agreement that the council's allowed them to continue to trade. But they mightn't be happy about the business going on to someone else and continuing in that manner. They might have been hope, waiting for or hoping for the vendor to sell up and get out and close down the business, ascertain the price. So there's some of the matters that need to be considered and we can then be in a position as the accountant to advise the client on what they uh, should be doing. Thinking of buying a business, let's have a look at that one. BAS1049. We'll just bring it up from here. And here we've got it on the screen now, thinking of buying a business. What's the personal motivation? Do they need some training, perhaps in market research, marketing plans, customer relations, budgets and cash flow forecasts, the accounting system, selling? What markets this is the business in? How big is the market? Is the market growing? Who are the competitors? The competitors SWAT. Is the location satisfactory? Is there passing traffic? Can people get access? Can they park? Or has there been a change in them by the main roads department? Have you checked whether there's any major infrastructure about to happen? Are you near, near is the client looking at a business that's near a major sports stadium? And therefore, is it going to be difficult to get access on certain days in a year? And will that interfere with your client's business? Some will see it as a bonanza, of course, create some boom times, but others, it might be a, a gross inconvenience. So that's some of the items that you could talk to your client about. And let's have a look now at the buying a business consultancy. This is some of the matters that you might like to take your team through. And we've got it linked back to papers in ESS Biz Tools. For people thinking about buying a business, here's some of the papers which we've produced in ESS Biz Tools that I recommend that you make sure your team have read and understand. Business structures needs to be revisited because that's one of the questions you should be discussing with your client. Budgets and cash flow forecast, some notes on marketing, some notes on retail pricing. Retailers have a difficult situation because they've got various items of stock with different quantities going through the business and also different markups that are applicable. And it generally gets known as stars. They're the, the high volume and high markups. Cash cows, which tend to be high volume, but fairly low markups. Problem lines, which might have been last year's fashions, but no one wants that colour this year. So you still might be able to get fairly high volumes, depending how much was left over from last year, but the markups are now being reduced. And then you've got the, the real bad lots uh, every, that everyone disowns that they ordered. They tend to be low volume, or hopefully they are. You've got real problems if they're high volume lines. Low volume and low markups. So your clients need to get rid of them. And how do, you, how do you try to manipulate the configuration through specials, through in-store promotions, through layouts of the store, through social media to get people coming in to buy your star items and you've got enough of the cash cows that you've probably got to have, your clients got to have, spread around the store to get people going a bit of a... Uh, a um, a treasure hunt trying to find the uh, cash cows 
which are now very conveniently located next to to a major um, star item that hopefully you're going to be able to sell impulse buying and all that and that sort of configuration in the planning will that achieve the target of profit for the business after taking into account obviously all of the overheads tradey businesses also setting their charge out rates manufacturing professionals excellence in business looking at the characteristics of a well-run business so there's a lot of material there that you can read to um, and your team that's involved in this sort of advice should be reading so that you're in a great position to be able to advise your clients as to uh, what is uh, happening in this process. So you see here all this material in the work checklist as I just flick through. We've got a financial analysis report, which I'm going to click on to now. This is the template of the report to the client on the financial analysis report that you could utilize or prepare something similar. Calculating what you believe the average net profit will be after you've made adjustments for appropriate management salaries and benefits, the rental of the property, bearing in mind that the vendor may have owned the building and hasn't ever worried about charging a commercial rent to the business operation. But in this discussion, um, your, your client's not going to buy the building, so there's going to be a rental charge. You need to make sure that's included in the budgets because the financial figures that the vendors provided probably hasn't got a rental figure. Has there been interest charged on internal loans? So you, there's various adjustments that you have made so that you have determined a future maintainable profit for the business. And based on what the vendor is talking about as a purchase price, what are the other costs going to be? Stamp duty, GST, if not acquired as a going concern, rental bond, electricity bond, working capital, other items. And there could be quite a number of other items. There might be a need for some immediate capital expenditure because part of the business is run down and you know your client knows that. They're getting a slightly discounted price because of it, but make sure the total investment's clearly been identified so that you can then be looking at what the rate of return will be. And is the client happy with that? Now, at this stage, we're in a bit of, I think, uh, very uh, unlikely situation to continue in the future because interest rates are at historical low records, low levels. That's not going to continue forever. So you need to be taking that into account in determining what sort of future maintainable profit you'd like to achieve so that there's a targeted re net return. It might be 20%, 25% is getting back to the normal rate of return that business people are seeking to take into account the realistic in, uh, return, the investment risk that you have in running any type of business. Due diligence exercises. And then I wanna to go to this question of buying shares in a company. Now, buying shares in a company can bring a lot of risks for the purchaser. So we've developed a due diligence checklist for buying shares in a company. Now, I like to think we've included just about everything that could happen in this situation. Some of it might not be a, a big problem. And again, it can depend what percentage of the company your client's buying. But you need to check the constitution. 
or the shareholders agreements if such a document exists? What's the corporate structure? The directors, the company secretary, who are the shareholders? Have any share options been issued? Normally they've been issued to leadership team people. Are there any shares that cannot be diluted by further issues? Is that an agreement that's been entered into with various people? You need to know that. The shareholders agreements or term sheets that I referred to earlier. What are the conditions there? There can be conditions on all sorts of things about uh, having to get shareholder permission to buy or sell an asset worth over say $100,000. The shareholders might have via a shareholders agreement, a right of veto over salaries being paid to various leadership team members. What are the specific requirements relating to any sort of veto that a group of shareholders have? Do they have the right to um, blackball an appointment of a director or to remove a director and so on? Who are the directors? So this form gives you me, a range of material to go through and check. Who's the chairperson? Does that person have a casting vote? <clears throat> directors meetings, how often are they held? Is your client going to be a director? Have they made inquiries as to the current financial position of the business? Check with the tax office records. Can they get copies of the most recent reports that have been prepared <coughs> by chief executive officer? And other leadership team members? How are they going on their business plan? Have they got one? Can you get a copy of it for your client? Do they have retreat meetings? Is your client going to be involved in these? Who's the company secretary? Is there an audit committee? Is there an auditor? There might not be an auditor, of course. But if the company's raised over $3 million from crowdsource funding equity raising activities, they need to have appointed an auditor. If your client was going to become a director, they need, he needs, or she needs to make sure they find this out. Because they could be falling um, foul of a uh, Australian Security Investment Commission requirement. Who's the team and so on. So hopefully that gives you a, a great overview of what can be, what should be done in undertaking a due diligence review on the purchase of shares in a company, because a lot of things can be hidden. And once your client has bought those shares and become a director of the company, any current problems land on your client's desk to be sorted out. And that could be money owing to the tax office Money zoning on superannuation. So it needs to be sorted out with the vendors. So that's the overview of the material that's, or some of the material that's within ESS this tools that uh, we uh, suggest that you could utilize to conduct the process of conducting due diligence to assist your client on the purchasing of a, another business, whether it's buying shares in the company or buying the business outright. I now want to talk to you about launching business advisory services into 2022. It's not very long to 2022, of course. So we have a Christmas and New Year diversification promotion. Diversification because 
the ComBank's accounting market pulse report released in May indicated that 95% of the accounting firms from all over Australia that they surveyed and indicated that in 20, 2021 and 2022, they were going to diversify their services further and that the top rated service line was identified as business advisory services. So we want to give you the opportunity of getting started on business advisory services. We have a special Christmas promotion that's going to run through under this Monday, the 17th of January. It's a 54% discount. It will get your firm started at the level that suits your firm. So we've got three levels on offer for you. The starter package for $89 a month for 12 months, including GST, $89 a month. Or a 12 months upfront discount payment of $899, including GST. And you receive a one hour mentoring session as part of that package. And you get a range of packages which will get you started in being able to offer business advisory services. You can upgrade later on, or you can upgrade by making a subscription for individual products, if that suits you. We then have the optimum package. Now this includes everything that's within the advanced package that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a moment, except <clears throat> access to ESS Biz Grants, and you are not able to use the license to upgrade ESS BIS tools material to a secure area on your website. That's what a advanced subscriber can do. So if you're interested in the advanced subs subscription, I'm coming to that shortly. But if you just want the optimum package, the subscription is $249 a month for 12 months, including GST, or the upfront discount payment is $2,499 including GST. And that package receives three mentoring packages, one hour each, or you can take them in 30 minute sections if you like. And the advanced package includes everything that ESS Pistols produce. Currently there's 32 product packages. The Subscription is $299 per month for 12 months. That's this 54% discount. Or you can get access to the product at a further discount by a 12 months upfront discount payment of $2,999, including GST. $2,999. Normally that package is $6,500, including GST. That includes four mentoring packages of one hour each. And um, you're really set up then to be, the de be delivering business advisory services by assisting clients to raise capital, crowdsource funding or early stage innovation company, delivering of a virtual CFO service because we've got a complete package on chief financial officer, helping clients on research and development, helping clients on understanding government grants and applying for government grants. You have a full access to pro promotional and marketing material that is included in the starter package that flows right through. So the advanced package receives everything that's in the starter package and everything that's in the optimum package and more. The more is access to ESS BIS Grants, which is a fantastic tool that allows you to enter some basic information on a client, it takes about three minutes, and the system will then identify grants that that client could be eligible to apply for. Produces a report so you can sit down and have a conversation with your client. It really shows your client that you're interested in them. <clears throat> So if you need more information or you're ready to subscribe, please go to our website, www.essbistools.com.au. 
So that's ESS Biz Tools. Hasn't come out in the slide there, but www.essbiztools.com.au. Our contact details. If you want to send me an email, you can do so, please. Peter at essbiztools.com.au. Or if you want to give me a phone call, that's okay. 1-800-232-088. But please visit our websites. There they are essbiztools.com.au or you can go on and have a look at our BizGrants product if you wish, www.essbizgrants.com.au. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. Please stay safe. Have a great Christmas. And we look forward to talking to you in 2022. And I hope you do have a very happy Christmas. And uh, let's hope 2022 is a better year than what it's been in the last couple of years. Stay safe. Talk to you all, I hope, in um, the not too distant future. Goodbye.